What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Thursday, September 15th, 2022, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Netflix is teasing this year's Tadam, a Netflix global fan event. The streaming service shared a trailer for the fan event Wednesday featuring the cast members from Bridgerton, Stranger Things, and other stars. The second annual Tadam will feature five events held around the world in 24 hours and give news and exclusive first looks at over 120 series and films. Jamie Foxx, Millie Bobby Brown, Noah C- uh, Centennial, Cho Ming Ho, Cho Yang Hung, Zakir Khan, Prajakta Kohli, Mati Pironi, Sharon Menendez, Maitreya uh, Ramakrishnan, and other stars will host the special. In addition to Bridgerton and Stranger Things, Tadum will feature The Witcher, The School for Good and Evil, Wednesday, Alice in Borderland, Money Heist, Slumberland, and Nola Holmes 2, Glass Onions and Knives Out Mystery, Emily in Paris, and more. Netflix announced in July that Tadam will return this year. The 2022 event will kick off September 23rd at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in, in South Korea, followed by a program at 10.30 p.m. from India. News from series and movies out of the U.S. and Europe will begin September 24th at 1 p.m. Tadam will conclude with a celebratory fan event September 25th at midnight in Japan. Netflix is also giving a glimpse of the new film, The Stranger. The streaming service shared a trailer for the crime thriller film Tuesday, featuring Joel Edgerton and Sean Hayes, or Sean Harris, rather. The Stranger follows a small circle of seasoned undercover cops as they pose as a vast and influential criminal network to catch a murderer who has evaded conviction for eight years. The trailer shows Edgerton's undercover operative get close to Harris's suspected killer during a long journey. The official description reads, Their uneasy friendship is at the core of this tightly wrought thriller based on the true story of one of the largest investigations and undercover operations in Australia. The Stranger is written and directed by Thomas M. Wright. Wright said in a previous statement, With The Stranger, I wanted to make a psychological crime film that took audiences into a place that was hidden, a film that was authentic and realistic in its detail, but also immersive and cinematic, a film that demanded attention and investment, a film that an audience could lean into and fall into. I also added, um, centered the film on people who didn't know the victims, who devoted years of their lives and their mental and physical health to them, because through violence is the reason for this film. It is not the subject. Its subjects is the connections between people. That means that, for me, this is a film defined by empathy. The Stranger had its world premiere at the Cannes International Film Festival in May and will start streaming October 19th on Netflix. Netflix released a trailer for The, the Curse of Bridge Hollow on Wednesday depicting Marlon Wayans and Priya Ferguson as a father and daughter fighting a mischievous spirit after moving to a small town. Ferguson plays Sydney, a uh, teenage girl reluctant to move from Brooklyn to the small town of Bridge Hollow as her parents, played by Waynes and Kelly Rowan, urge her to give the town a chance. They arrive to find the town decked out in elaborate Hollywood decorations, which Wayne's character, a science teacher, finds silly. A woman tells the girl that a wicked man named Stingy Jack died in the house the family is moving into. A Pierce character says in the trailer, so I might live in a haunted house. This place just got a little cooler. But the trailer quickly turns to mayhem. Priya says in the trailer, you guys are not going to believe this. Cindy Jack tricked me into finding his old lantern. And now the Halloween decorations are coming to life. The trailer shows Waynes and Priya engage in comical battles with Halloween decorations, have come to life and are terrorizing the town as the father and daughter race to stop Jack by midnight. Coming to Netflix on October 14th, The Curse of Bridge Hollow also stars Rob Riggle, John Michael Higgins, and Lauren Lapkus. The film is directed by Jeff Wadlow, Todd Berger, and Robert Rogan wrote the screenplay with the story by John R. Morey and Berger. 
Fox renewed Master Chef, the competitive cooking show hosted by Gordon Ramsay, for a 13th season. The network announced on Wednesday. Ramsay will return for season 13 along with judges Aaron Sanchez and Joe Bastinich. TV Line, Variety, and Deadline reported. Master Chef is the network's most watched summer series, averaging 3.2 million total viewers, according to TV Line. Across the networks, the show is tied for third uh, with The Challenge, USA on CBS, and Trailing Big Brother on CBS, and America's Got Talent on NBC. The season 12 finale feature, uh, features a guest appearance from former judge Christina Tulsi, airs at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The winner will take a $250,000 prize. Master Chef is produced by Andamio Shrine, North America, and One Potato, Two Potato Executive. Uh, the executive producers are Ramsey, Elizabeth Murdoch, Danny Schrader, Pat Leowen, Ben Adler, Shan Levy, and DJ Nur. The show is based on a format by Frank Don't Romand. Uh, Ramsey and Fox established a joint venture, Studio Ramsey Global, last year to produce series include Next Le- Level Chef, Hell's Kitchen, and Gordon Ramsey's Food Stars. USA Network and Sci-Fi are giving a glimpse of Chucky Season 2. The network released a trailer for the season Wednesday featuring Zachary Arthur, Borgerman Armandson, um, Alia Allen Lynn, and Brad Dourif. Chucky is based on the Child's Play film series released between 1988 and 2019 and is a sequel to the 2017 movie Cult of Chucky. The show centers on Chucky, a serial killer whose soul was transferred into a doll. Uh, the official description reads, after his diabolical plan to invade America's children's hospital was foiled in season one, Chucky now seeks revenge on those he held responsible, surviving teens Jake, played by Arthur, Devin, played by Aronson, and Lex, played by Lynn, along with his ex, Tiffany, now his sworn enemy. Meanwhile, can Jevin make it as a couple in the face of adversity at their new Catholic school, not to mention a brand new onslaught of terror from the demon doll? Dura voices Chucky. Chucky is created by Don Mancini, who created the Child's Play uh, franchise. Season 3 will premiere October 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on USA Network and Sci-Fi. The Amber Ruffin Show will return for a third season in September. Peacock shared a teaser and premiere date for Season 3 of the Late Night Talk Show Wednesday. Season 3 will consist of five episodes and premiere September 30th. Subsequent episodes will stream October 7th, November 4th, and 11th, and December 16th. Ruffin said in a statement, We're so excited to bring you more of the Amber Ruffin show. This time we have more stars and more margaritas. It's going to be a party. The season's guests will be announced at a later date. Uh, writer and executive producer Jenny Hagel added, I can't wait for fans of the Amber Ruffin show to see what we have in store for them this fall. We got more silly sketches, more smart commentary, more surprise celebrity guests, and more jokes that will make you laugh until tequila comes out of your nose. Ruffin and Hagel, executive producer with Seth Myers and Mike Shoemaker. Seasons 1 and 2 of the Amber Ruffin show are available to stream on Peacock. Ruffin came to fame as a writer for the NBC late night talk show Late Night with Seth Myers. Netflix is giving a glimpse of Love is Blind Season 3. The streaming service shared a teaser and premiere date for the new season of the dating reality series Wednesday. Love is Blind features singles who can date but do not see each other while sequestered in pods. The couple meet face-to-face after getting engaged and then live together until their wedding day. Season 3 was filmed in Dallas, Texas. In the teaser, the new singles share their hopes of romance. One person says in a voiceover, We came out here and... Take a chance on love. I'm not for everybody, another person adds. I just hope I will be for him. Love is Blind Season 3 will premiere October 19th. Netflix will also release the Love is Blind After the Altar Season 2 special on Friday, which gives an update on Leanna McNeely and Jarrett Jones, uh, Danielle Rule and Nick Thompson, Natalie Lee and Shane Jansen, and other cast members. Serena Williams won't be relaxing after stepping away from her professional tennis career. The four-year-old athlete discussed her evolution from tennis during Tuesday's episode of The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Williams announced in August that she would, quote, move on from playing tennis after the 2022 U.S. Open Tennis Championship, which concluded Monday. On The Tonight Show, Williams reiterated that she considers her stepping away from the sport as an evolution rather than a retirement. Williams said... 
Uh, I think retirement is something that's super earned and that people work really hard for, and maybe I haven't worked hard enough. But I just feel like I'm at an age where I definitely have a lot more to give, and there's a lot more that I want to do. I'm not going to be relaxing. There's going to be much more for me. I feel it's more of an evolution of Serena. She added, there's so many things that I've been wanting to do for so many years. I've had such a passion for tennis for so long that I've never done it. Now it's time for me to start to enjoy things. Williams also discussed the possibility of her returning to a professional sports a la football star Tom Brady, who announced his retirement from the NFL in February, but returned 40 days later. Uh, Williams said, you know what? Tom Brady started an amazing trend. That's what I'm going to say. Actor Justin Long, who was also a guest on Tuesday's show, um, got together with Williams, host Jimmy Fallon, and Roots member Terry Trotter to play a game of catchphrase. Lewis Tomlinson took the stage on The Late Late Show with James Corden. The 39-year-old singer performed his song Bigger Than Me during Tuesday's episode of the CBS Late Night Show. Bigger Than Me appears on Tomlinson's forthcoming solo album, Faith is the Future. The album is Tomlinson's second solo album since One Direction went on an indefinite hiatus. In an interview, Tomlinson said Faith in the Future defines him better as an artist than his first solo album, Walls, released in January 2020. He says, the first album, the album before this, my first album, it's something I'm immensely proud of. It was challenging coming out of a band the size of One Direction and then kind of finding my feet musically. You got to go through a kind of trial and error process when you're making music, especially at the start of your career. But I had to do that in public. He added, this record, I'm certain, definitely makes me better as an artist and that makes me really proud. Tomlinson released a single and the music video for Bigger Than Me in September. He'll release Faith in the Future on November 11th. A federal jury in Chicago has convicted R&B singer R. Kelly on child pornography charges for videotaping himself sexually abusing his 14-year-old goddaughter and four other minors. Jurors deliberated for 11 hours and found Kelly guilty Wednesday on six of, out of the 13 counts of sexual exploitation and enticement of a minor. Kelly was convicted on three of four counts of production of child pornography and three of five counts of enticement of a minor to engage in criminally sexual activity. The 55-year-old singer was acquitted of obstruction of justice related to an alleged conspiracy with two associates to hide video evidence during a trial in 2008. Both co-defendants, Milton Brown and Darrell McDavid, were acquitted on all charges against them. This is the second guilty verdict for Kelly, who was convicted last year in New York on charges of federal racketeering and sex trafficking. He is currently serving a 30-year prison sentence in that case. On Wednesday, U.S. Attorney John Losh told reporters that Kelly could face 10 to 90 years in prison for his latest convictions, and that prosecutors will request both sentences be served consecutively. Losh says, when we have instances where defendants are are convicted of committing horrific acts against other individuals and it's separate and apart from other horrific acts that he committed against other individuals were asking for that sentence for the consecutive. Kelly, whose real name is Robert Sylvester Kelly, was tried in, in Chicago in 2008 and was acquitted on 14 counts of producing child pornography. A video from that trial became a new, uh, a key piece of evidence in his new trial. Five women, including Kelly's goddaughter, Jane, accused Kelly of sexually abusing them when they were girls. While Jane denied that Kelly abused her in his 2008 child pornography trial, she identified herself as the person in the videotape and testified in their trial that Kelly intimidated her and her family and paid them off to keep the the abuse secret. During the trial, Jane testified that Kelly abused her numerous times when she was a, not, a minor at his home, in his recording studio, on tour buses, and hotel rooms. Jane also testified that she described to come forward after she became exhaustive with living with his lies. This, uh, during closing arguments Monday, Assistant Attorney Elizabeth uh, Palazzozo uh, reminded jurors, you have seen the tapes, you have seen what Kelly did to Jane. Uh, Robert Kelly uh, abused many girls over many years. He's committed horrible crimes against children. The hidden side of Robert Kelly has come to life. The truth 
has come out. In her closing arguments Tuesday, Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean argued Jane's parents lied about and condoned Kelly's abuse. Uh, it is inconvenient reality for the government. Lives are, are complex, and for all the first pounding and the outrage, that family made a decision that they had to live with at the time. So they've covered Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber are celebrating four years of marriage. The 28-year-old singer and 25-year-old model marked the occasion Tuesday by dedicating loving tributes to each other on Instagram. Justin Bieber shared a candid photo of himself and Haley Bieber in bed with their dog. He captioned the post, Happy anniversary to my best friend and wifey, Haley Bieber. Thanks for making me better in every way. Haley Bieber posted slideshows of photos, including a picture that shows herself and Justin Bieber kissing on their wedding day. Uh, she, she wrote, Four years married to you, the most beautiful human I've ever known. Love my life. Thank you. Thank God for you. Uh, Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber legally married in September 2018 and held a second wedding with family and friends in South Carolina the next year. Haley Bieber discussed Justin Bieber in the September issue of Harper's Bazaar, saying they both have put uh, the work to make their marriage successful. Haley Bieber said of Justin, he's still the person that I want to be rushing back to. I might fly somewhere and go do a job, but I can't wait to come back and hang out. I feel like that's because of the effort that's been put in on both sides. At the end of the day, like he's my best friend, but it still does take a lot of work to make it work. And then I know eventually when Ken's come into the picture, that's going to be a whole other season of navigating how to make that work. Justin Bieber announced last week that he will postpone the remainder of his Justice World Tour to focus on his health. And finally, the South Korean girl group Blackpink is adding new shows to its Born Pink World Tour. The K-pop stars announced six additional dates for the North American leg of their tour, Wednesday. Blackpink will now perform October 25th and 26th in Dallas, Texas. October 29th and 30th in Houston, Texas, and November 2nd and 3rd in Atlanta, Georgia. The group previously announced that it will perform November 6th and 7th in Hamilton, Ontario, November 10th and 11th in Chicago, Illinois, November 14th and 15th in Newark, New Jersey, and November 19th in Los Angeles, California. Pre-sale tickets are available now, with tickets to go on sale for the general public on Friday. Blackpink will kick off the Born Pick World Tour with a pair of shows October 15th and 16th in Seoul, South Korea. The group will perform in North America, Europe, Asia, and Oslandia before bringing the tour to a close in June 2023. The Born Pink Tour is in support of Blackpink's album, the same name, which will be released on Friday. The album features the singles Pink Venom, Shut Down, and six other songs. Blackpink consists of Jisoo, Jenny, Rose, and Lisa. The couple of the group celebrated Monday after its music video for the song Whistle became its sixth video with more than 800 million views on YouTube. And that is your entertainment report for Thursday, September 15th, 2022. I'm your husband, Mr. Dan Tamri Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night. God bless you all.